again, coach. It's great to see you. So learning, what is it? I'll begin by reintroducing the basic description we provided in our last video. Gaining new or modifying existing behaviors, skills, knowledge, values, or preferences. In this video, we'll spend our time exploring what learning is, and more importantly, how we actually learn. There are many theories that try to explain learning, leading to different approaches and beliefs. But don't worry, I won't spend the length of this video describing each theory, as it will just become confusing and steer us off topic. Instead, I'm going to introduce one of them that I believe is universally applicable to coaches across numerous contexts. In 2005, Phil Race introduced the educational world to how teachers can better make learning happen. And he did this through the analogy name ripples on a pond. As you can see here, each ripple presents one of six factors that underpin successful learning. The ripples are one, wanting, two, needing, three, doing, four, making sense, five, feedback, and six, teaching. Now, what I propose is that we spend the rest of this video translating each factor to how a coach might use them to facilitate learning. The first factor of wanting, related to the idea that learning happens when someone wants to learn something and therefore are motivated to learn it. As we all know, this isn't always the case with the children we coach. Therefore, a coach has to create the want in their participants, which can only truly be done if the coach knows and understands their motivations. So, spending time getting to know the kids you coach and what makes them tick is very important. Similar to wanting, needing suggests that learning is promoted when the participants are aware of their need for a new piece of knowledge or skill in order to succeed. So, in other words, if you want to get here, you need to have this. It's perhaps simpler than a coach creating a want, but the coach also must create a need and ensure a player can see it and feel it. The third factor, doing, is where the coach becomes truly active. It suggests that in order to learn successfully, the participants must be actively doing, but doing in line with what they are required to develop. For example, if a tennis coach wants their players to learn how to effectively return a serve with their backhand, they should create a practice activity that allows for frequent attempts to return a serve with their backhand. There is more though, the ripples on a pond theory suggests that the tennis players would then need to make sense of this information. That's the fourth step of sense making. The coach then should facilitate an environment where the players can understand when they would use the backhand shot when returning a serve, but also why this is the best shot selection. In addition, the fifth element contributing to learning is feedback. The coach participants or peers can aid the sense-making process by giving feedback on the performance. And the coach can better facilitate this by encouraging participants to give themselves and others feedback. The sixth and last factor is teaching, which suggests that successful learning in participants is truly underpinned by the ability to educate someone else. That is, we have only truly learned something when we are able to teach it to others. As such, a coach should aim to create an environment where participants are encouraged to educate others following their own learning. So, taking all this into account, we suggest that learning is successful when a coach deliberately creates an environment where each of the six factors can be satisfied. Okay. I know I have spoken about these factors in a particular order, one to six. But as we've discussed, learning is messy and most certainly does not happen in a logical order, nor does it all happen within one training session. The analogy of ripples on a pond implies that ripples ebb and flow forwards and backwards 
which is a fair reflection of how learning works. So sometimes learning may start with making sense or feedback, but a want and need should still be present in the players. What is important is that a coach is aware of each of these factors and that they ensure that their practice and behaviour allows for the ripples to ebb and flow from one to six. In the next two videos, we'll take a deeper look at the strategies we can use to ensure this happens. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and please keep watching. See you soon.